It's the world's most technologically advanced military. It's also home to equipment almost 100 years old. These are some of the oldest weapons still in operation in the U.S. military. M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun It's been the United States' premier heavy machine gun for a whopping 89 years, and it's not looking to retire anytime soon. Designed in 1918 and adopted by the U.S. military in 1933, the M2 packs a formidable 50 caliber bullet fired at a muzzle velocity of 890 meters per second. It has a maximum range of 7,400 meters and an effective range of 1,800 meters. This machine gun is powerful enough to punch through even some armored vehicles, and that's exactly what it was originally meant to do. At the end of World War I, more heavily armored planes were being put into the air, with the German Junkers J.I. sporting an armor that made traditional aircraft machine guns largely ineffective. General John J. Pershing, commander of the American Expeditionary Force, requested the Army Ordnance Department develop a heavier machine gun capable of punching through improved aircraft armor. His request was for a machine gun capable of firing a minimum 50 caliber round at a minimum muzzle velocity of 820 meters per second. John M. Browning began redesigning his 30 6 M. 1917 machine gun to be capable of firing a heavier round, requested by General Pershing. On October 15, 1918, Browning's first prototype was tested, though it achieved a less than stellar performance with a firing rate of less than 500 rounds a minute and a muzzle velocity of only 700 meters per second. To make matters worse, the weapon was very heavy compared to lower caliber models, was difficult to control when firing fully automatic, and was too weak to punch through armor while firing too slowly to be effective against enemy infantry. Browning got unexpected aid when a shipment of German T. Gewehr 1918 anti-tank rifles and their ammunition were seized by American forces. The German rounds had an 800-grain bullet with a muzzle velocity of 820 meters a second and could penetrate one inch of armor at 230 meters. Using the German rounds as inspiration, Winchester worked on improving the 50 calibers cartridge eventually leading to an effective round that achieved most of what the Army had requested of it. From 1921 to 1937, American aircraft were equipped with an experimental water-cooled version of the machine gun. These trials helped to refine the various versions of what would become the M2, formerly adopted by the United States before World War II. By the time the war broke out, the machine gun was standard on nearly every American aircraft and was used in everything from anti-material to infantry support and even air defense roles. Today, the 50 caliber enjoys service alongside American troops in every theater of operation and has been involved in every American conflict since World War II. Modern 50 calibers can be equipped with several different types of ammunition, including M33 ball rounds for personal and light material targets, M17 tracer, M8 armor-penetrating incendiary, M20 armor-penetrating incendiary tracers, and newer sabotaged light armor-penetrator rounds capable of punching through 1.34 inches of steel armor at 500 meters. The M2, nicknamed the 50 or Mod Deuce, is such a good weapon it outperformed an intended replacement in the 60s and the current modern replacement for the weapon was cancelled. This means the US military will continue carrying the fearsome M2 into battle for decades more to come. Our next weapon system is not as old as the M2, but current plans are to keep it in operation for almost an entire century. CH-47 Chinook It was a helicopter born of necessity. Caught up in a war waged across inhospitable jungles with few roads, the U.S. Army desperately needed a way to quickly supply firebases spread across Vietnam. Most importantly, though, it needed to be able to supply those far-flung firebases with heavy equipment such as artillery. But cutting a road through the thick jungle would take years, and even then, the unpredictable weather and enemy ambushes could make such a journey impossible. The United States invented air assault operations during Vietnam with its extensive fleet of helicopters and quickly stopped to do the same with logistical concerns. However, current helicopters in the U.S. inventory were simply not powerful enough to carry heavy howitzers. Fortuitously, though, a twin-rotor transport helicopter had already been in development since 1957 to replace the Sikorsky CH-37 Mojave. The resulting V-107 was deemed too heavy for assault operations but too light for transport missions. Thus, work was undertaken to develop a larger, beefier helicopter capable of heavy transport duty. In 1962, the CH-47 Chinook officially joined the inventory of the U.S. Army forces. Despite its massive size, the Chinook has an impressive speed of 200 miles per hour and at the time was faster than any other utility or even attack helicopter. Today, the Chinook keeps that speed record, making it one of the fastest helicopters in the U.S. inventory. Throughout its lifetime, the airframe has received numerous upgrades to keep it up to date with new technology, but the core design remains largely unchanged. With two powerful rotors, the Chinook can carry up to 55 fully equipped combat troops or as much as 10 tons of cargo either inside or slung underneath it on cargo hooks. The helicopter would 
would prove its worth through every U.S. conflict since Vietnam, but really shown during the war in Afghanistan. With its difficult and mountainous terrain, Afghanistan proved to be a challenge for the U.S. Army carrying out resupply and mobility operations, but the Chinook was easily able to navigate even the extreme heights of Afghanistan's mountains with ease. The Chinook continues going strong 60 years after being adopted into the U.S. inventory. The Army's future vertical lift program will eventually deliver a replacement for the Chinook, but will focus first on a replacement for the UH-60 Blackhawk. In the meantime, future upgrades will keep the Chinook in operation for a predicted 99 years. Our next weapon is not just old, but proved to be so good at its job that its use was even expanded within the U.S. military. Carl Gustav Recoilless Rifle In service since 1946, the Carl Gustav 8.4cm recoilless rifle is perhaps the most successful anti-tank weapon ever made, and the U.S. military plans on continuing to use it for a long time. The Carl Gustav M1 was developed in 1946 by Hugo Abramson and Harold Jeans at the Royal Swedish Arms Administration. The weapon was developed with the help of knowledge gained from the operation of American bazookas, British Piats, and German Panzerschreck during the war, building on the strengths of each while making its own innovations. The greatest of these innovations was the use of a rifle barrel to spin stabilize an explosive round, negating the need for a projectile to be outfitted with fins and thus reducing weight and improving performance. Another improvement over the Allied and German World War II two anti-tank weapons came in the form of developing the weapon as a recoilless system. A recoilless weapon ejects countermass from the rear of the weapon to negate the effect of recoil when firing. This allows the weapon to be much more accurate and to fire a larger projectile, while making the firing unit lighter and easier to use. Today, the Carl Gustav is an extremely economical solution for the anti-tank and anti-material needs of any infantry unit, with a unit cost of just $20,000 and an ammo cost that ranges from $500 to $3,000 depending on the round. The weapon can fire up to six rounds a minute. With a crew of two, though it can be operated by just one soldier at a reduced rate of fire. It's also capable of accurately hitting moving vehicles at a range of up to 400 meters, stationary targets up to 500 meters, and can use high explosive rounds with a range of 1,000 meters, or rocket-boosted laser-guided ammunition at a range of up to a whopping 2,000 meters. The U.S. military initially only issued the weapon to special operations forces, but it was so good at its job, it expanded the use of the Carl Gustav to regular forces as well, with U.S. forces being engaged by RP at ranges up to 900 meters, no light weapon in the inventory of U.S. infantry could effectively counter this threat. Thus, the M3 multi-role anti-armor anti-tank weapon system variant of the Carl Gustav quickly came into wide adoption. Along with wider adoption came an increased variety in ammunition, which quickly made the M3 a favorite of U.S. infantry. Today, the Carl Gustav can fire high-explosive rounds, high-explosive anti-tank rounds, high-explosive anti-tank rocket-assisted rounds for increased range, high-explosive dual-purpose rounds for engaging enemy vehicles vehicles and structures, area defense rounds for engaging large numbers of enemy troops, anti-structure rounds for destroying enemy buildings, smoke rounds for creating a thick smoke screen, and illumination rounds for lighting up large swaths of grounds at night. The Carl Gustav is so good at its job there is no planned replacement in the pipeline, and instead it continues to be upgraded with even more modern projectiles and electronics. Our next aircraft has been the workhorse of the American Air Force for 65 years, and looks to continue that role for another 30. The C-130 Hercules During the Cold War, the United States knew it could be forced to fight in the most destructive conflict mankind could ever wage. Given the unprecedented destruction of even a non-nuclear conflict between itself and the Soviet Union, the U.S. needed to ensure it could still resupply forces across a devastated Europe. To that end, it called upon the C-130 Hercules, possibly the world's most rugged and versatile cargo aircraft. Its primary selling point was its ability to operate out of makeshift airfields, a key concern for a U.S. military facing a very real probability of having Allied airfields knocked out of commission by Soviet forces. Its requirements, however, were set in the years after the Korean War, when the U.S. realized it needed it dedicated military cargo aircraft and not models adapted from civilian use. The C-130 would be specifically designed to be a modern military cargo plane with a capacity of 92 passengers or 72 combat troops. Alternatively, it could fit 64 paratroopers and all of the equipment they need instead. The use of four turboprop engines gave the aircraft greater range and gas mileage than a turbojet variant and explains why it remains in use throughout the modern age. With few core design changes, the C-130 remains in service with various configurations, including the vaunted AC-130 gunship, the modern C-130J Super Hercules, featuring improved avionics, new engines, new composite propellers, and other modern updates, ski-equipped variants for ice operations, and the tactical airlift and aerial refueling variant in use by the U.S. Marine Corps. Maritime patrol versions are in service with the U.S. Coast Guard, and a ruggedized version of the Hercules is used in the deployment and retrieval of special operations forces. The C-130 
remains in service not just in the U.S. military, but in militaries around the world, and looks set to continue serving with its home nation until the U.S. Air Force completes its CX Next Generation Airlifter program. Our next entry in this list is not just one of the oldest serving weapons in the U.S. inventory, but is scheduled to have a lifetime in excess of 100 years. The B-52 Stratofortress Strategic Bomber. It can level a small town all on its own, and it can fly a whopping one-third of the way around the Earth without refueling to do so. It's the United States' big stick, the B-52 Stratofortress. Its origins herald back to 1945, just two months after the end of World War II. The United States was already looking ahead to the next conflict. The Air Material Command put out requests to aircraft manufacturers for what would become the heavy bomber of the future. This aircraft would need to carry out missions far from home and operate without the aid of advanced bases in other countries. In other words, this big bomber needed to have a great enough range that it could strike anywhere in the world without worrying about securing ground bases in other countries to do so. It was to have a crew of at least five turret gunners to defend the aircraft and a six-man relief crew for long-range and long-duration missions. The aircraft would need to cruise at a minimum of 300 miles per hour at a height of 40 3,000 feet and be capable of hitting targets 5,000 miles away. For defense, it would carry 20mm cannons, and on the offense, it would drop 10,000 pounds high explosives. For the next several years, Boeing and the U.S. military would go back and forth on design changes, finally landing on the B-52 we recognize today in 1952. The aircraft would go on to break many records, shockingly even speed records, setting a world speed record of 560.705 miles per hour in 1958, only to be broken that same day by another B-52 flying at 597.675 miles per hour. That speedy bomber would eventually be outrun by a smaller jet aircraft, but the big plane continued to set and break records in endurance with a whopping 12,532-mile unrefueled flight in 1962. With the support of aerial tankers, though, B-52s were able to circle the globe non-stop in just under two days. This incredible reach in endurance quickly earned the planes a nuclear mission, and to this day remains part of the U.S. nuclear triad. However, it's the conventional firepower that makes the B-52s the undisputed kings of the sky. With the ability to drop a whopping 70,000 pounds of explosives on any target around the world, modern up Upgrades to the fleet include new engines and wing structure replacements, electro-optical sensors, and infrared and advanced targeting pods. B-52s are now capable of such precise strikes that they were used commonly as close air support platforms for coalition forces in Iraq and Afghanistan, delivering overwhelming firepower with pinpoint accuracy. Originally meant to saturate a target with dumb gravity bombs, modern B-52s use a suite of onboard sensors to monitor a battlefield and deliver precision fire exactly where it's needed most. Laser-guided bombs can be guided to a target by a B-52 or allied aircraft, or even by forces on the ground. GPS-guided munitions can be fired and forgotten by a loitering B-52, and the development of long-range standoff attack munitions can give the B-52 an incredible reach even in contested air environments by staying well out of the reach of enemy weapons and sensors. With even more upgrades to come, the American B-52 fleet is set to remain in operation for an estimated additional 50 years, with some estimates placing the B-52 total lifetime at 150 years. That means that by the year 2100, B-52s could still be flying as part of America's arsenal. Now go check out Top 10 Weapons of the Future or click this other video instead.